The Sony PlayStation arrived during a bridge era, a time when we made a transition from 2D to 3D as a primary graphics style for home consoles as well as PCs. One technique that migrated with this transition was dithering, the application of noise to help create an illusion of greater color depth. Many 2D games for console, arcade, or computer platforms made use of this technique for years to help enhance their limited palette. For the Sega Genesis in particular, dithering has been a controversial topic regarding whether or not to intentionally use composite video to enhance the effect. The same controversy exists for the Sony PlayStation, but dithering on the PS1 is a much more complex topic. Call it charm or call it annoyance, the PlayStation applies dynamic dithering at the discretion of the developer, sometimes blanketing everything with a checkerboard dithering pattern at the time the graphics are rendered. This leaves two big questions. Number one, why is dithering necessary on a 32-bit console? And number two, what are you talking about? I don't see any dithering in PS1 games. Let's examine dithering on the Sony PlayStation as well as find out why it seems to be extinct in the modern era. The PlayStation GPU has two modes in regard to color depth. One of these is a 24-bit direct mode that allows for 16.7 million colors, but is essentially used for still image display. We need to do a lot more than that. The second is a 15-bit direct mode. This drops our total on-screen maximum color count to 32,768, when totaling the colors of all the polygons, map textures, and shading on the screen at the same time will never surpass this total. There are additional details to mention for development and colors on the PlayStation in regard to this restriction, but let's move past the system programming and focus more on the results we see as gamers. I'll simulate some PlayStation-esque dithering in Photoshop. We'll start with a smooth gradient. Now let's drop the image to only 16 colors. Notice the banding. The transition from left to right is jarring as we move from one color to another. Now let's perform the same conversion but apply a dithering pattern. It still only consists of 16 colors, but the use of dithering makes the transition from one color to another much smoother. Dithering such as this is applied dynamically and ad nauseum on the PS1 in order to compensate for lack of color depth, not just to gradients, but also to textured polygons and even 2D pixel art at times. The results will vary depending on the surface receiving the dithering. So why does it seem like you don't see it as prominently with PS1 games these days? Well, there are several reasons. Emulators can simply ignore the color restrictions of the original hardware and render in 32-bit color. PS1 games on the PS3 are upscaled with a degree of smoothing regardless of your smooth setting on the system and therefore present dithering that is less prominent. Online video footage of PS1 games often consists of a low resolution capture or is highly compressed, therefore hiding the dithering details in an unnatural way. Contrast the modern machine solutions with those individuals that elect to use original hardware, such as a PS1 or a PS2 paired with RGB cables. This approach most definitely allows for the dithering pattern to be seen. The irony, of course, is that there are several that take this approach and state that they don't like the dithering and would prefer it not be present. They had their wish granted within the last year as we now have the ability to disable dithering on actual PlayStation hardware. To observe the various appearances of dithering, I'll use the game Tenchu Stealth Assassins. The first image is from a CRT using composite video. The dithering patterns are not quite as pronounced as they would be with a superior signal. Moving to S-Video using the same display, we can begin to see the pattern. Now a switch to an upscaled capture, and now an emulator. If we remove the dithering, notable color banding is present. If, however, we let all color calculations for a rendered image be performed in a 32-bit color space, color transitions are much smoother. In late December of 2017, tech enthusiast and retro developer Chris Covell tweeted some information regarding dithering on the PS1 and the relative simplicity of disabling it. By altering instances of values pushed to the system's drawing attributes for a given game, dithering can be disabled on graphics output from original PlayStation hardware. To accomplish this, you can either alter the values in the game's files and burn a disc to play using your homebrew-friendly PlayStation, or you can use a cheat device, such as a Game Shark or Action Replay, and disable dithering in the same way you would activate cheats, by inputting codes before starting the game. This footage of Tenshu is running on original hardware, but with dithering disabled. 
With the ability to disable dithering for a game running both in an emulator and on an actual PlayStation, we can dive deeper into how dithering affects both the graphics and gamer experience of a PS1 game. It was a limitation of the hardware at the time, true, but does it also define the aesthetic of the PS1 these many years later? Silent Hill is a survival horror game and makes heavy use of dithering. This not only provides a transition between different colors, but also enhances the mood. We'll start with an emulator on PC simulating PS1 hardware. Now let's disable dithering. Immediately you see banding between the colors. There are abrupt and deliberate breaks throughout the draw distance from the player. Dithering in a 3D space, like Silent Hill, helps mask a short draw distance, provide a fog effect, and limit visibility in such a way that adds to the tension. If Konami had not used dithering here, I feel the Silent Hill experience would have been quite different. Now let's use original hardware. This is a composite video example. The dithering gets a bit of assistance from the degraded color resolution and seems to create an intended look and feel. If we slide over to S-Video, we can see the dither patterns emerge. And if we then disable dithering on the original hardware, the patterns disappear, leaving a cleaner image that perhaps isn't quite as stark as the emulated capture thanks to a CRT display. Let's shift gears to examine Castlevania Chronicles. Chronicles is a 2D game that applies dynamic dithering to the 2D artwork. The results are rather odd. In addition to the questionable application of dithering to the 2D art, the patterns appear to shift as Simon walks across the screen. Notice the colors of the pixels in this section and where they are relative to the surrounding areas. If I slide forward just a bit, the location of the dark and light pixels appears to oscillate. Pixels once darker are now lighter and vice versa. The same oddity is present on a PS3, but is not as pronounced due to the inherent smoothing during upscale. I'm not sure why Konami deliberately decided to apply dynamic dithering to Castlevania Chronicles when they did a PlayStation release of the Sharp X68000 game. I suppose you could make an argument in favor of it if you use composite video, but my theory is quite simply either Konami thought adding dithering would improve the older graphics, or they used their own graphics functions and just happened to have dithering enabled. I feel this game is an obvious example of an instance where you would want to disable dithering. As for the more popular Castlevania entry in the system, Symphony of the Night, the use of dithering was more subtle, at least from what I saw. Instances include menus, such as the background layer on file selection screen, and save confirmation boxes. One example during gameplay appears when death takes away Alucard's powers. You can see it applied to a background effect. Metal Gear Solid leans on dithering quite a bit, and I feel that it is part of the game's charm. You'll notice that even the Konami logo screen is dithered. Now one thing interesting about Metal Gear Solid is that it appears to make use of dithering on the graphics used for textures and then also apply an additional layer of dynamic dithering over those graphics. The intro of the game makes heavy use of it just as the rest does. We can examine the application of dithering during that intro by comparing still shots with and without dithering. Watch the radar screen in the foreground as we add dithering to the scene. You can see that it certainly adds some depth to the color yet also seems to create a bit of a checkerboard feeling of sorts. The radar is only on screen for a couple of seconds as the camera sweeps across the inside of the sub. So even if a still shot may have dithering that seems distracting, perhaps the motion negates that distraction and promotes the scene's mystique. This shot seems to gain both depth and mood with dithering applied, and the details are very easy to see with RGB or an emulator. Gameplay graphics without dithering also take away from the depth, as you see with this screenshot from the first playable area. The codec in MGS allowed for Snake to talk to other characters via certain frequencies. Unless we haven't found the codes to disable dithering here, it looks like the dithering is baked into the 2D graphical assets, similar to graphics on older consoles, and that makes sense. Personally, this is my favorite codec look in the MGS games, and I wouldn't want to disable dithering even if I could. Transitioning into another major genre of the PlayStation era, the JRPG, we have 3D battle scenes that apply dithering to the heroes, enemies, and environment. Squaresoft RPGs, such as Chrono Cross, take this approach and pepper the battle scenes with dithering. Does it add to the cohesion, or is it distracting? I suppose it depends on camera location and movement, as well as display output, like in many other cases. Star Ocean The Second Story demonstrates an instance of pseudo-sprite-based characters placed on a 3D environment during battle. Dithering is used in the HUD as well as the environment. Character sprites appear to stay clear of it. This seems like a good selective use of dithering. 
Strider 2 is a rather interesting example that also combines 2D with 3D. This stage is heavily dithered. You can see how it is not only applied to the environment, but also to the character sprites. It is especially present during sword slashes. After defeating the boss of the first area, the second area loads and does not appear to use dithering. I suppose it is possible that this was a choice made due to the lighter color in the area. Personally, I would have just left it off the 2D sprite graphics similar to Star Ocean's approach. Ridge Racer and Gran Turismo also use dithering quite a bit, and it helped add to the realism in early 3D racing games. High quality video output in larger displays may lead some people to dislike the dithering even more now than they did in the 1990s. Others may say that heavy dithering is what makes Gran Turismo Gran Turismo. And as we wrap up, this last example demonstrates the splintering of how we experience PS1 gaming. Original hardware? Dithering on or off? Emulation with 32-bit color? I haven't even touched on rendering at a higher resolution. At some point, perhaps you just decide you might as well play one of the newer releases in the Gran Turismo series. Dithering is an interesting topic for the PS1 two decades after the system's release, and I've only scratched the surface when it comes to examining individual games. You are ultimately left with a salad bar's worth of decisions as to how to play your PS1 games. I don't feel we need consensus as gamers, only knowledge of what is out there. The decision of how to play your games is yours, of course. I hope you enjoyed this video on dithering for the PlayStation 1. If this video interests you, please consider subscribing, liking this video, and even sharing it with people you think might enjoy it. That would really help me out. If you would like to contribute to Patreon, I have left a link in the video description. Leave a comment telling me what method you prefer when it comes to playing PlayStation games. Thanks for watching.